and uh, hello everyone. Hello everyone who's joining me, uh, joining us via chat. So I'm going to talk a little bit about UCA Farnham uh, first of all. UCA start, stands for a University of the Creative Arts. Um, it's actually an amalgamation of some different uh, arts universities. And um, I'm kind of assuming, given the nature of my talk, that at least some of you are interested in applying for the animation course. And I am head of theory, the academic side of, um, of animation, which stands for, uh, accounts for about 25% of the marks. And um, I think it's a very relevant uh, part of the course because it gives you context for your own practice. I think that in order to understand understand animation, to understand any kind of arts practice, you need to be able to contextualize your own work within the history of your subject uh, and also to kind of understand some of the critical theories, the um, relevant ideas that might uh, underline your work. Uh, so certainly researching the history of animation, I've discovered some uh, fascinating things which uh, inform my own practice to this day. Um, so yeah, I think it's essential to understand what has gone before, whether you're studying music or fine art, whatever. It's very, very important to understand your own context and the whole history of it. So um, I like to think that um, it is highly relevant to people's creative practice. I think um, traditionally, perhaps a lot of artists aren't so interested on the academic side. They're creative people, they're visual people. They want to purely focus on their own practice. But I think it is absolutely um, essential. I should say I am actually also a, uh, a filmmaker and animator in my own right, so um, I'm just not just uh, an academic. So um, I put together um, a sample uh, lecture for you, um, but first of all it'll be a little welcome to UCA Farnham, which uh, Okay, just mastering technology. Yes, so first of all, I do hope you'll visit farnhamanimation.com. It's all there. It's a very nice uh, interface with a lot of very, very useful information. And it gives you an idea of the output of students year by year as well. And I've taken a few pages from it. So um, this is the sort of... Uh, Oh gosh, I'm getting some nice comments here. Um, yeah, so this is just a few screen grabs from the website um, and it gives you a certain amount of historical context. We have some marvellous uh, alumni, uh, Michael Dudok DeWitt uh, being a, a, a very famous one. Now I should say that um, there's some very uh, special things that are specific to the course here. This is possibly the oldest animation course in Europe, certainly one of. I think it is actually the oldest one in Europe and it was established um, well, it's just celebrated its 50th anniversary. Um, so I believe it started in 1969. Some people say it was 1972. I'm pretty sure it's 1969. Uh, and it was founded by a very important British animator whom I will come to. This is, our, this is my boss, this is Lucy Adams, who is the programme director of animation, who is herself um, an animator. Um, now, this, this course was set up by this man here with a wonderful moustache and little scarf. He is called Bob Godfrey, and he's like almost the patron saint of British animation. He is um, four times Oscar nominated. He won the Oscar in 1976 for a film he made appropriately called Great. And he's most famous to people my age for doing two very famous children's television series um, called Rhubarb Custard and Henry's Cat, although he produced uh, a huge amount of work as well, but that's what he's mainly known for. And it was felt after the war that whilst a lot of people were learning their craft of animation uh, in studios, they were often not from, they weren't actually trained independently. And it was felt that there was room for a bespoke animation course um, because there wasn't one uh, available. So he set up one at what was then called Guildford, I think Guildford College of Art and Design or, or Guildford Polytechnic. And that's actually, uh, Farnham is the continuation of that very course. So it is in about uh, 1976. This is taken from a, a BBC uh, television documentary and he does look marvellous with his um, fab 70s clothes. 
Okay, so that's him giving um, one of the students a tutorial. Uh, as you'll notice, there are lots of light animation light boxes there. Obviously, this is the pre-digital age when people would draw directly onto paper on a light box and then trace over their drawings. Um, um, we'll uh, have to trace over their drawings in cell. I'm just looking, uh, someone's saying, I'm sorry, but how can I change my chat settings? Uh, Okay. Oh, sorry, Martin, I've fixed that so that they can, okay. everyone can change them now. They were turned off, but now it's back on. So. Okay. okay, great, great. So there he is in sort of mid-tutorial. Uh, and this is him, um, gosh, it was at one of the uh, uh, anniversaries of the course. So there he is in, in full um, academic regalia. So I'll just... Um, jog from one to the other. So there he is in about 1976 and there he is uh, rather more recently. Sadly Bob passed away in 2013 um, but at the moment at Farnham but sadly I don't have any pictures of it there is an exhibition of his work called Bob Godfrey a collaborative act, uh, a col a collaborative act. and on Monday of this week uh, two days ago there was a marvellous um, symposium, a conference in his honour, uh, and also that marked the, uh, the opening at the of the exhibition. So Bob is a key figure here, not just in um, British animation, world animation. Uh, he was a great supporter of collaboration between countries, so he'd be furious about Brexit, um, but also uh, a key figure specifically for this university. So, um, and he was a, a massive influence on me and one of my great inspirations and one of the reasons why I studied animation in the first place. So a big thank you to Bob. Uh, right, here are some alumni. Uh, Mark Baker of Peppa Pig, of course, one of the co-creators um, uh, of Peppa Pig. Tim Searle, who's a, another important figure. He's directed numerous series of the Mr. Bean cartoon series. Uh, for those people closer to home, uh, he did uh, almost all the title sequences for uh, Have I Got News For You, so he's a very important figure. And the wonderful Chris Shepherd, who is a, a singular talent and a, a remarkable maker of innovative short films with his own particular sense of humour, as well as being a successful uh, commercial animator in his own right. Uh, a, a genius. Um, then the next list is people with an Oscar connection. So we've got a wonderful uh, array of uh, Academy Award nominees, but also we have uh, two Oscar winners. Um, Actually, no, we have three. Susie Templeton, who of course made Peter and the Wolf, which is a massive success, uh, a, a great work of art. And yes, yeah, so we have in this list six nominees and three uh, actual winners so that the, the the it's a wonderful pedigree of uh, of um animators uh, animation alumni so i do hope you will come and join this list so where are we now okay so this i thought i'd give you a little bit of information about me move that out of the way. So uh, I'm actually not originally from uh, an animation background. I did an academic degree uh, originally and this is perhaps why I'm teaching on the academic uh, side of the animation course here. Um, but thanks to meeting Bob and various other people uh, some years ago, um, I was encouraged to apply to the Royal College of Art and I did the Masters in Animation there. I had actually been making films for quite a few years before I did that but that offered me um, a certain amount of focus which I think is very very important. Animation of course is rather a, a time-consuming business uh, so um, I think it's something that you have to dedicate yourself to do. You need to be fairly single-minded so the opportunity offered me um, quite a lot of much needed focus and if you see at the bottom I've uh, I've been a visiting lecturer at a number of other universities. Um, yes, so I also organise a monthly screening event in London called London Animation Club, which I invite um, guest filmmakers to come along and show their work. This, it was also an attempt to create a kind of a social scene uh, where animators could meet. Um, animation can be a slightly lonely business uh, outside of university, so I thought it was important to make some kind of you know, focus, uh, an opportunity for um, 
animators to meet in 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 informal surroundings and also to appreciate um, marvelous work of guest speakers and we have had some amazing people uh, come to talk um, Jonathan Hodgson will be one of the people coming uh, in a few weeks time anyway so that's a little bit about me um, okay uh, here are some images I just thought I'd show you a few images from my work this is a film uh, I made some years ago called The Commuter which is one of the films I took to my interview at the Royal College of Art this is a still from my uh, Royal College of Art graduation film which is quite old now it's 2007 uh, hand drawn on paper um, this is a drawing from a film I made called What is Animation appropriately uh, I interviewed Bob Godfrey um, in 2006 and um, this was an adaptation of about two minutes of the interview uh, in which he sort of puts forward his theories about uh, animation. Now you might think why is this fellow going on and on and on about Bob Godfrey? Uh, well this is relevant because the um, short, I say very short lecture I'm going to give you is on the subject of what is animation, which is what uh, Bob discusses in this point. And if you had to choose someone to expound their theory of the theory that underlies animation, I think you couldn't really cho choose a better person than Bob. But we'll finish with that, okay? Um, here are some stills for some other animations I've made. Um, here is research related material. Um, this is at Zagreb. Um, International Animation Festival, um, Joanna Quinn and Bob Godfrey there again, um, Phil Malloy taking the photo, um, there's another still from the film. Uh, I made a uh, two documentaries about the Hallison Bachelor Studio. Most of my output is not published in the conventional sense, it is actually um, documentary rather than printed and this is a project I made with a woman called Vivian Hallis who is the daughter of Hallis and Bachelor and Hallis and Bachelor are John Hallis and Joy Bachelor, and they ran a very important post-war British studio. Interestingly, John Hallis was Hungarian and Joy Bachelor was British, and it illustrates the fact that British animation in the post-war period was, by its nature, international. So British animation was truly international. Um, and this is something I hope we don't forget in these awful Brexit times. So John Hallis, Bob Godfrey would have all been horrified by Brexit and the insult it does to other Europeans. Um, that's Joy Batchelor. Um, and uh, yes, so I made two documentaries about them with um, their daughter Vivian. As part of a kind of an ongoing research project, this is the masthead of London Animation Club. This is Mariam Mohajo, who has just won a um, BAFTA award for best animated short film. So congratulations to her. This is a photograph of her. Um, uh, she's the lady pointing at the table. Um, she came to Animation Club last year. Um, and here are some other uh, photographs from the club. As you see, it's uh, quite an informal social environment. There's Candy Guard and um, Bunny Chandler to her left. Um, this is Kate Sullivan holding a clanger. Um, the man on the right is Peter Furman, who is the co-creator of the clangers, these little pink mice who lived on the moon. Uh, Peter Furman created a number of much-loved British children's animations uh, from the 1960s and 70s, all stop motion, um, with a man called Oliver Postgate. Uh, sadly, Peter Furman has passed away since this photo was taken, but we had a lovely evening with him. Um, this is Joseph Wallace, who is uh, a younger animator, uh, a marvellously talented guy. He recently made a, an animate, a stop motion animation for the band Sparks. And uh, you can actually see the male brothers in effigy form at the very, at the very front of that photograph. He came uh, a few months ago. Uh, and that's Phil Davis, the producer of Peppa Pig, who came along too. So, and this is uh, Kate Jessup. Uh, and I'm having stage fright. I can't remember his name. I'm really sorry. <laughs> It'll come to me. Leo Crane, that's it. Kate Jessup and Leo Crane, who came along recently. And this is a um, 
a curated program of short films by members of the club, all of which are a minute long. I was asked to put together a program for a one minute film festival happening in Hull and I was able to put together about 40 one minute shorts made entirely by either by members of the club of the club or uh, guest speakers and so that's the poster from that I did a, a repeat screening in London for that um, so we produce work as well as um, socialize and uh, have guest speakers okay so that's my background um, I hope that doesn't sound self-indulgent telling you about my background um, because I, I think it is relevant as it informs the course and my attitude towards it. Um, so anyway, so my part of the course for the first year is called Animation Contexts and Concepts. Um, the year two theory is called something else. So what I thought I would do would be to give you a little sample lecture. Um, so here we are. This is abridged from a, um, a lecture that I would give, more or less the first lecture to the first year students. So, and it is called appropriately, What is Animation? So, uh, well, what do we mean by a concept? Animation is a concept. And I, here I'm kind of introducing the students to approaching tangible things from a, a theoretical or a conceptual idea we all um so you know what is animation you kind of you know it when you see it it's a practical thing i switch on the tv i watch cartoons i go to the cinema i see a cgi feature film um and so on so we can we know what it is but it, perhaps it's harder to define it what actually makes something an animation as opposed to something else um, so we almost don't um, stop to think about what that might be so a concept a concept is an abstract idea all right our concept is can we find a satisfactory definition of animation so what is animation well it depends on who you ask and to very celebrated figures in animation tried to answer this question and these are quotations which you will actually find in a lot of textbooks let's start with uh, uh, Charles Solomon and his definition this is his abridged uh, definition is that animation is something in which the imagery is recorded a frame at a time Okay, that makes sense. You hold up a strip of film of an animation, you would see a series of um, separate uh, still images. Um, you run them through your projector and they appear to move. Or drawings on a, on a worktop, you photograph a series of still images, you run them all together and you have the illusion of movement. He says in the second one, the illusion of movement is created rather than recorded. So that's interesting. So you start with stills of one form or another. It could be different stages of a, uh, a stop motion mannequin, you're moving it a bit at a time, but each time you're taking a still image and the illusion of motion is created rather than recorded. So we start with stills and we run them together and that is what makes it move. That's what gives it the illusion of life, okay? Right, so I think we, we can follow that fairly clearly. And then Norman McLaren, who is a Scottish animator working in uh, Canada, who helped establish the Canadian Film Board, uh, which those of you who've been to animation festivals will know well. In a letter, he, um, he gave a quotation, uh, which has been used a lot. He approaches it a slightly different way. He says, animation is not the art of drawings that move, so he's contradicting Charles Solomon. Animation is not the art of drawings that move, but the art of movements that are drawn. What happens between each frame is much more important than what exists on each frame. Animation is therefore the art of manipulating the invisible interstices that lie between the, the frames. And at this point, I'd say to my students, let's have a little discussion about this. Turn to your neighbor and try to, um, talk about this uh, say what you think of this almost try to translate it because there are some rather complicated terms here and uh, I get the students to talk to each other a couple of minutes and then we sort of start again and 
what the consensus is um animation is not the art of drawings that move they don't have to be drawings of course but the art of movements that are drawn what he seems to be saying is you have an idea of the movement almost the movement exists in the abstract and then you're trying to kind of nail it down with a series of drawings uh, if that makes sense um so he believes that the move the idea of the movement exists independently of the actual drawings the drawings are kind of uh, almost secondary so he's starting completely the other way around. Instead of having a still, a series of still images when played together, they create the illusion of movement. He has the, he has the idea that the movement is before that, and then you're trying to capture it. You're trying to nail it to the drawing board, uh, an image at a time. Uh, so it's a very, very different concept. Norman McLaren's one is. I feel slightly unsatisfactory. It's perhaps too poetic and there are difficult words in it like in interstices. What I think he's talking about is the invisible movement that is almost continuous between the frames, if that makes sense. So it's quite a lot to uh, take on there. Yes, and I've written underneath interstices or are small or intervening gaps. Now I hope I haven't frightened you all off with uh, this rather theoretical concept, but um, even even if we can't quite take this in, I think it's thought provoking and perhaps some of it will stay with us um, when we think of animation again. So those are the two very conflicting theories. And of course, this introduces us to the idea that actually there often aren't rational answers to things. Um, the emphasis on the theory side of my course is theory. It's about research. It's about thinking. It's about being um, equipped with ideas or even systems that enable you then to research topics, the topics you want to research and to provide uh, written work. So rather than my kind of imparting information, I'm trying to get people to discuss ideas um, and then uh, equip people to um, become independent learners, I think. Um, I do provide, uh, as I said earlier, quite a lot of history as well, because I think one needs to have that kind of concept. Um, but here, it's perhaps beginnings of questions. So anyway, I hope I haven't terrified you with, uh, with those remarks. Uh, oh, a few more technical issues. Ah, right. So... Are these satis uh, definitions satisfactory? So can we even define what is and what isn't animation? So, well, what we can do, if we go back to being less poetic, less philosophical and perhaps more rational, we can say, we can define uh, animation techniques. Perhaps we can, it's more difficult to say it theoretically, but we can say, well, animation is hand-drawn animation, 2D computer animation, 3D computer animation, stop motion, pixelation, uh, and puppet animation. Uh, and these generally operate frame by frame, okay? Uh, I'm getting quite warm in here, so I'm afraid I'm going to take, I have to take my jumper off. <laughs> anyway, so what I do next is I show this image, and this is very like a famous image by a man called Richard Williams on the cover of his um, famous book on animation. So um, what we generally see when we're making an animation is you'd have something on screen, perhaps a walk cycle. This is meant to be a stick man walk cycle and uh, a cutout of a photograph by Edward Mybridge, who made things uh, very famously called chrono photographs. He photographed, uh, photographed people in motion and these are, his pictures are still used uh, for reference today. So we've got a, a picture of uh, a Mybridge walking man that I think most animation students would recognize and then a kind of a stick man and they would be doing um, a kind of uh, walk cycle which is an early exercise that uh, animation students would do so and then we go to the next thing now if you're um, producing 2d animation uh, on the computer you'd have your image that you're producing of 
what any one frame looks like, uh, any one picture looks like, uh, and then you'd have probably some kind of timeline. Uh, I don't know why I'm pointing, it's not because there you can see what I'm pointing at, but at the top of the screen you see there's some sort of timeline, and this is a screenshot from um, an old version of Flash, but I think it's still valid whether you're using After Effects or uh, TV Paint or Animate as it's uh, called today. You'd have some kind of timeline, uh, and then wherever the needle in the timeline rests, you would see a particular still image of the thing you're producing. So I think that's pr probably fairly familiar to most people. Okay, now, so that's what we think of when we think of uh, 2D computer animation or 2D hand-drawn animation, something like that. Now, then things start to get a little bit problematic. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of video clips, and these are ones that are available on YouTube, so I think they're um, fine to use in a lecture like this. Um, there's another one which I'll describe to you because it's not available on YouTube. Anyway, here is a clip from a, uh, a television series called Captain Pugwash that was produced in the 1970s and I just want you to take a quick look at this and think about what kind of animation are we looking at okay so I'll just play you a very short clip of this come on board all of you you're just in time for breakfast it's sausages today welcome back to the black pig cabin and what on earth are you wearing that ridiculous hat for Okay, so that's it. Now, can anyone tell me live what uh, technique of animation that was using? Can anyone give me any suggestions? I'm looking at your um, your chats here. Anyone at all want to volunteer a suggestion of what kind of animation, what technique of animation was that one using? No, no one yet. I've obviously uh, maybe pixelation. Is it hand drawn? And I've got a, a row of exclamation marks and question marks. Hand drawn, hand drawn, hand drawn two D. Okay, that is interesting. Um, well, it's kind of hand drawn. But let's have a look. Uh, right now, this is uh, one of the images from it. Um, it's actually something slightly different, John. Um, uh, Ryan's daughter Isabel came along to my uh, screening event and she showed uh, she showed this oh, sorry about this ah okay here we go Ship ahoy! <laughs> I need to be practice. <laughs> There's another one, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Master Mate, I think. Is, yeah. Master Mate is probably open and shutting his mouth. Or maybe. Hey, ship ahoy! Don't cut my arm. <laughs> you can kind of see there that what looks like 2D hand-drawn animation, almost something that could have been done in After Effects or in Flash. Ash, although because it's old, though that technology wasn't available, it looks like a kind of a hand-drawn thing, but it isn't. It isn't actually animation, technically, from our um, definitions that we've already looked at, because it is actually continuous. What you're actually looking at, you think, is animated drawings. In fact, it's not. It is a series of um, hand-drawn cutouts, hand-drawn and hand-painted cutouts. And what you're watching is a continuous performance. It's not recorded a frame at a time because as you can see at the bottom of the screen, you can see people moving figures with little um, cardboard pulleys, little cardboard whatever. Um, so it's actually more in common with conventional puppetry. So although the camera is filming just the relevant part, uh, the actual cutouts, uh, you don't see the hands moving everything. This is still a form of puppetry. It's a continuous performance because the camera is not stopping a frame at a time. It's not being generated on the computer a frame at a time. So that begs the question, is this animation? Uh, I hope I've explained that well enough. Um, but yes, I'd like to see some, oh, we've got, wow, puppet, yes. Uh, was it created by many pictures? And someone said puppet. So uh, Kimbo, uh, yes, absolutely right. It is a form of puppetry. Well done. Um, but it does beg the philosophical question, is it animation? Because it looks like animation. It serves as animation. It is moving drawings after all. Is it, in fact, 
animation or is it live action film? It doesn't look like live action film to me. I think it's somewhere in between. And actually, if I had to make a choice, um, I would probably say it is animation, even though it breaks the rules that we have tried to establish. Although Norman McLaren might say, uh, it has the you have the idea of continuous movement that underlines it underlies it. So if someone were to write me an essay which had to be on uh, about an animated film or series and they did it about Captain Pugwash, I would be absolutely happy about that. Um, so yes, yeah, someone said O O M G and someone else is saying amazing. So it's very nice to get feedback, by the way. I was afraid I'd just be talking to uh, to empty space, but this is actually uh, now uh, an international uh, lecture, which is very flattering for me. Okay, so, um, so this is, I'm just reiterating what I said a moment ago, although it consists of moving drawings, is it live action or is it animation? And actually, does it really matter? I think that one of the key elements of uh, animation is perhaps a sense of contrivance. Um, traditionally, live action film relies on more of the actuality of what is unfolding underneath, uh, in front of the camera, uh, usually with actors doing a performance in a location. There's an element of chance. You're seeing real people doing real things traditionally. The, with the Captain Pugwash clip, you are watching complete contrivance as it were it's moving drawings you don't really have a sense of the um the filmmaker or filmmakers being present uh now this is a film which i can't show it's uh, called ts4 by um, an artist filmmaker called guy sherwin whom I, I admire very much indeed he's coming from an experimental film background he actually is very very modestly say says he isn't an animator at all he's coming out of a kind of a 1970s film co-op tradition um which would mainly traditionally would mainly be um live action film he makes films on 16 millimeter but uh, in the last few years he's finally started using uh digital techniques to make his films now in this particular film which as I say, sadly, I can't show. Um, he films the view from a train window and he's looking out at this fence post which runs alongside the train. And as the train starts to move, you see the fence moving. Now, the way he's timed this, um, for each frame that passes, one, frame, one fence post moves into the position of one before it. So at a certain point, the fence appears to stay still. Does that make sense? With each passing frame, the, um, each fence post um, to the right moves just one increment to the left and replaces the fence post that was there a moment ago, okay? So although the background is moving, the fence appears to stay still with the result that the array of nails that you see on each fen fence post appears to start to animate. The fence looks as though it stays still and the nails animate. Um, they sort of dance up and down. Um, and yes, it's a very good question now. Is this live action film or is it animation? And he filmed it with a camera phone pointed against the glass uh, in a train parked outside uh, a railway station uh, which starts to move. So that's live action film, isn't it? He's filming purely what is happening in real time um, in front of the camera. Um, he is filming, yes, in real time what is unfolding in front of him. Um, he's not stopping frame by frame. Surely this is live action film. And yet we start to see the nails animating. They are moving in a way that they simply don't um, through a kind of replacement. OK, so within live action, you have a kind of animation starting. And yeah, this is really quite difficult. Are we watching animation or are we watching live action? Now, 
What we don't know is actually he's played around with the clip. He's actually timed it. He's resynced it so that in fact, the this is why each fence post um, replaces the one before it. In fact, that isn't something that happened when he originally recorded it. And there's a clue in the soundtrack. You can actually hear everything's running slightly too slowly. So he has actually retimed it. So he has interfered with the uh, image. He's perhaps disrupted it or whatever. But within live action, you have uh, animation starting to happen. Anyway, uh, I hope I haven't scared you off with that. It's a shame I can't show you the clip anyway so is it live action or is it animation and then this uh, clip i can show you um it's a music video from the mid 90s and it's using a time lapse uh technique now time lapse is something you also associate with live action um yeah is it is it animation you're recording things that are happening in real time in front of the camera uh, you are just effectively speeding up the image by recording it very very slowly so let's just have a quick look at this Right, sorry, rather truncated clip uh, there. And um, the actress Tilda Swinton there is uh, walking around a kind of a, um, an insane London. Um, at the beginning of the video, it's unclear whether or not she is, um, whether she herself is animated or a real human being. She's like an angel that comes to earth and walks around London um, in re seemingly in real time, but uh, everything around her is massively um, speeded up. So this is using time-lapse photography, um, yet she appears to be walking in real time and she's moving a frame at a time because um, each, the, each frame uh, of time-lapse is perhaps going every, one frame every 10 seconds, say. That's why everything around her appears speeded up. But she is walking in a series of still increments um, which coincide with this, with the result is with the result that she's walking at a, a, a at a normal speed. Everything around her is uh, is going at an insane rate, um, and that begs the question: Is this animation or live action? It's again somewhere in between. You could say that this is a form of pixelation when you get a person to uh, take on a series of still. Uh, poses which you photograph a uh, uh, frame at a time and then when you play back it creates the illusion of movement okay so Tilda Swinton in this film is staying still and being photographed and going to a subsequent pose and being photographed and it's only when you play these back that you have the illusion of her walking However, at the same time, you have time-lapse film going on around her, which really uh, normally counts as, as live action. And so you could joke and say that whenever she is within the frame, this film is pixelated. It's a form of pixelated animation. But whenever she's out of frame, it's merely time-lapse photography. So uh, again, these uh, definitions are rather, rather difficult to, uh, to pin down. And again, I hope I haven't scared anyone off with all this uh, conceptual stuff. So um, I would then say clearly the boundaries between animation and live action are blurred. We had uh, Captain Pugwash, which appears to be hand-drawn to d animation it turns out it's a form of puppetry we have ts4 which appears to be live action in which a kind of an accidental animation starts to happen not because um, it was photographed a frame at a time but because of a an artifact of the retiming of the film and then with that one you have some kind of interplay between time-lapse photography live action and uh, pixelation animation so these um these definitions start to break down but uh, perhaps we don't need a specific definition of animation but now we understand the terrain and this course is about terrain it's about context and the concept of definition that you can actually define animation at all is a useful starting point so 
to finish, uh, I'd like to show you the two minute film I made uh, of Bob Godfrey talking about uh, what is animation. So, uh, and we'll finish with this. Hope you enjoy it. What is animation? Well, animation is not live action. I think that, that, that says it, you know. Anything that is not live action, which is actuality, but is drawn, is animation. And the thing about animation is that um, there are absolutely no rules. I mean, these schools that are springing up all over the place, how to walk, how to run, <laughs> you know, based on live action. How a live action man runs, how a live action person walks, you know. People in animation don't have to walk. They, need, they don't even have to have legs. I mean, they can go up in the air. You've got to have a very whimsical mind for animation, I think. You know, you've got to be able to take off and be not of this world. You can create a whole, a whole world. And when people are confronted with this absolute freedom, they, they tend to say, we want limitations, you know, we want gravity. They're basically, there is no gravity in animation. You know, animation is free, it can fly, it can go anywhere. And I, I don't think enough people realize this, they're, they're too earthbound. The worst thing that animation can do is to start copying or aping live action. I have always said, if this thing can be done with a live action camera, for God's sake, do it with a live action camera. The Germans call animation trick film, which I think is so clever because that is exactly what it is, trick film. And I was delighted to discover that some other theory lecturers in other parts of the country have actually started sharing that with, his, with uh, their lectures. So that's very um, flattering. Thank you very much indeed, everyone. I'll have a look at uh, the webinar chat. Um, oh, gosh. Right. Uh, someone says, uh, this is animation. I think you're talking about the, I'm not quite sure which one you're talking about there. Um, I think that was the uh, the one you just played, Martin. Uh, the uh, the animation that's just finished. Oh, really? <laughs> this is animation. Thank you. Yes. Can it be called a cartoon? I, I would say so. Um, cartoons tend to be um, hand drawn animations that have full flat flat, uh, flat color in them. Uh, how can a f how can a filmmaking make computer animation? I think that's how can a filmmaker make uh, 3D computer animation? Well, that would be using um, a variety of um, computer applications. Come on the course and find out. Uh, Maya is a popular one. Uh, Cinema 4D is another one. Um, you have access to excellent facilities here. Um, they, there's a large animation studio with uh, terminals all the way around. Um, so you can work digitally, you can work 3D. Um, and also there are camera rostrums as well for people who want to do either um, photograph 2D artwork from above uh, or to set horizontally uh, to make um, a stop motion animation using figures and puppets and so on. Oh, this is sweet. Thank you, uh, Yaroslav. Um, Martin Pickles, thanks a lot for the lecture. Oh, bless you. Uh, will it be some lessons about 3D animation? Ah, yes, I will be doing that. Um, last term I did 
a whole lecture about the history of 3D animation, um, which actually goes back to, <laughs> I think, the University of Utah in America in 1972. Uh, someone for a postdoctorate project um, set out to try to find whether he could model uh, human hands and uh, human faces. <laughs> And this is one of the fellows who went on to become an important part of, uh, of Pixar. So uh, I've, I find the origins of things absolutely fun, uh, fascinating. Before they have too many layers of complexity, you can kind of see where everything's coming from. Uh, and of course, the contribution of um, Steve Jobs uh, in the early days of Pixar, uh, George Lucas, of course, and uh, John Lasseter and so on. But yeah, I, I find that absolutely fascinating, the history of 3D animation. Although I would say I'm not a 3D uh, specialist myself, uh, but I find the history of 3D absolutely fascinating. And some years ago, I actually did um, a one-year master's at uh, Middlesex University uh, um, at a place called, uh, well, it, my, my uh, course was called Computing in Art and Design. And we did learn a lot about the, uh, the early days of computer generated art in the 1960s. So it's a very, very exciting time in the 60s and 70s in computer, emerging computer art. Uh, trick film, yes, it is a great, uh, a great word, uh, trick film because um, the one that Bob uses towards the end of that film, uh, trick film, because it kind of lets you off the hook. You no longer have to define what's animation too closely. And I think Captain Pugwash uh, is very much trick film. Uh, so yeah, that just breaks it down so much, uh, so much easier. Does the IT blur the boundary between live action and animation. Yes, uh, Kinbo, thank you for that. It's a very, very good point. A number of my students in uh, a recent essay chose the topic to compare the old Lion King, the um, hand-drawn Lion, Disney Lion King from the early 90s with the more recent um, CGI remake, which of course Disney themselves describe as uh, a live action film. Um, yes, IT does blur the boundary. Um, I see the new Lion King as being a computer animation with live action elements. Um, Disney themselves define it as live action. So it's very, very difficult. Um, I think it's important to note that within most mainstream, uh, particularly American films, uh, there will be some use of CGI. Uh, almost habitually. So if you think of a, a say a romantic comedy, something like that, and you have a couple um, sitting next to a, a lake at dawn and everything looks wonderful. Just to give it that added layer of romance, um, the filmmakers may add a flock of geese uh, flying past at that particular moment, which weren't there in reality. Now, a live action film is using CGI animation. And we don't question this anymore. It's just normal. In BBC historical dramas, often, you know, uh, I don't know, 19th century towns with big smokestacks are CGI'd on in the background of what is a historical drama. So we live in an interesting time. So yes, absolutely, IT or CGI blurs the boundary between live action and animation. But again, I think you need to sort of sit down and, and watch the film and just make your own mind up is it cg is it does it count as an animation the film as a whole or does it count as live action you can kind of watch it and think yeah you know but i would count uh, the lion king as being animation okay here we are uh info about oh yes thank you that's very helpful info about the uca courses available here please look at this follow it up oh yes yes yeah, so it's uca.ac.uk study courses uh, is Tom and Jerry a hand-drawn or a 3D animation? Well, gosh. Um, the original uh, Tom and Jerry, of course, is very much uh, a hand-drawn uh, animation. Are you talking about a, a 3D remake here? Um, in which case, well, that's a good question. Now, obviously, there's no doubt that the original was... Um, uh, hand-drawn. That's the one I know about. Um, I haven't seen a 3D remake, uh, so I don't think I could comment. It depends whether, how, how much of it is using live action um, uh, actors, um, so I don't know. Uh, here, someone's saying, I think it's hand-drawn. Well, if you're talking about the original Tom and Jerry, absolutely. It is all hand-drawn uh, on cell. 
uh, celluloid uh, started in the 1940s and then uh, migrated to television uh, some years later. Um, right. So, um, Martin, uh, one or two questions came up a bit earlier okay. on. Um, okay. If it's okay, I could uh, just read them out for you. So uh, the first one is from Wynne, uh, who is asking about rotoscoping. Uh, is that one of the techniques of animation? Yes, absolutely. That's a very good, and I, I, I think I missed that out from the list. Rotoscoping, of course, is, um, well, it's the, the sort of father of what you call now motion capture or mocap. Rotoscoping is definitely an animation technique. Yeah, you photograph your actors or whatever, your figures moving in real time, and then you draw over them a frame at a time, or uh, it used to be on paper and so on. So then when you run them back a frame, a frame at a time, you photograph them a frame at a time, when you run the film back, the drawings have the illusion of movement, but it's very, very accurate movement because it's based upon a real actor moving in real time. Yes, um, used to great effect in the original uh, Snow White, of course. Um, which is um, technologically for its time uh, uh, quite a remarkable film. So yes, I should add that to uh, to the list. Rotoscoping. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, another question here from uh, a different Win. This is from Win uh, Tiet. Uh, what is the difference between animation and cartoons? Oh well, I, I'd say that cartoons are a form of animation, but animation isn't necessarily cartoon. Um, cartoon is a word that people often use, kind of interchangeably with animation, um, but they are actually slightly. It is rather more nuanced than that. Cartoon is Tom and Jerry, the original Tom and Jerry, if you like. It's hand-drawn animation. Um, usually dr originally drawn on cell, which is sheets of clear celluloid. You do your pencil drawings, you then trace over them neatly in ink, with an ink line uh, on this, these clear sheets called celluloid or cell. Uh, and then you would fill in between the pencil lines, you'd fill them in with paint with a kind of flat color. So that's, you know, what we associate with, you know, classic Hollywood animation up until, you know, the late 1980s, really. Um, so yeah, and cartoons are also a kind of, not just a technique, they're a kind of a genre. You associate them with uh, children's TV, obviously with Disney and so on. So it's also a kind of a sensibility, I, I think, of, of kind of slightly mad visual gags and over the top characters, you know, Bugs Bunny, Wile E. Coyote and so on. So I think it's a it, cartoon is kind of an animation technique, but it's also a kind of an animation genre. You kind of know what you're getting if someone says, I want to show you a cartoon. Yeah. And uh, Wynne has a follow up question there in the chat about uh, is it that animation is the act of animating or giving life or spirit while a cartoon uh, could be a comic, ah, uh, yeah. a humorous drawing. Um, That's yeah. absolutely right. Thank you for that. Yes, I mean, the, the origin of the word cartoon actually goes back before filmmaking. It, it uh, is also applied to comic strips. Um, I was just applying that to it in uh, movies. So yes, um, a cartoon, I mean, originally a cartoon was a sketch um, long before the association was with, you know, humorous uh, drawings that you'd see in the newspapers. It would actually be a, a drawn study of something. So you have a kind of a cartoon by Michelangelo is not something you're going to laugh at. It's it's going to be a, a study executed on paper, uh, a, a simple drawing of some sort. So yes, you're absolutely right. These words kind of get reused. You see a new concept, a new thing comes along and you need to find a word to describe it. So because um, a word was needed to describe this these kind of animations they went to the step before which was uh, drawings in newspapers and of course as I'm sure a lot of you will know a lot of the early cartoons were uh, were adaptations of newspaper cartoons that had been around before um, so uh, yeah uh, words get reused but yes you're absolutely right this is why to this day some people mix up uh, comic strips with animation and it's uh, 
uh, yeah. So people say mm. to me sometimes, oh, you're interested in animation. Then they'll ha hand me a newspaper supplement uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, of cartoon drawings of comic strips and so on. So it, uh, um, yeah, there's a, there's a bit of a confusion there, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Great, great. Um, a question here from Viet also in the chat. I think we may have answered this already, Viet, but just to clarify, um, those films that require editing of characters that aren't real, uh, like uh, Maleficent, Maleficent, I think, uh, can that be called animation? Those films that require edit, editing, the characters aren't real. Like, I'm not quite, I don't, I haven't yeah. seen Maleficent, I'm afraid. Um, it's a bit of a... Um, I believe it's a sort of CGI um, augmented kind of, uh, so live action, but oh, augmented as well. Action. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this, this goes back to something I mentioned earlier. Where do you draw the line? If something is using an awful lot of... Uh, animation, CGI, uh, when does it become, when would you start to define the film as an animation rather than a live action film? So films like Lord of the Rings, for example, even the Harry Potter films are using so much CGI, but the impression that we have, the aspect of it is live and I think is definitely live action. Um, and uh, a lot of motion capture is used where you have a bit like with rotoscoping uh, you have the performance of an actor they wear you know, wear a special suit with all sorts of points on it um they they do the they act out the character and then and then their movements are transposed to a 3d animated figure um and then you think well we're watching a live performance yet you and, and with an uh, but it's an animated figure where it's actually seeing you know where where is it is it uh, and i think the answer is somewhere in between really uh, but yes that's a that's a good question um excellent um martin i think we are rapidly uh, running out of time for yeah, the sure. session so if it's all right maybe i could just ask one final question from the q a which is also from win um, who is asking, well, they say, I'm passionate about this technology uh, and I want to study about it when I move to university. Um, can we make some lessons about technology? Uh, I mean, uh, when I'm assuming this is related to the discussion about animation technology, maybe like computer assisted animation, is that is that right? Um, if you can let us know in the chat, but yeah, interested to hear your thoughts, uh, Martin, what the options are for yeah, more uh, animation technology and computer assisted animation. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, um, it educates you. I mean, this is more the practical side of the course. I mean, I cover a lot of things that, you know, relate to um, animation as we find it in the present day. So the historical context and the theoretical context in terms of the creative side of the course. And I think that's what you're referring to. There are marvelous facilities here to go across, uh, you know, a variety of um, techniques and so on i mean people start with basic animation exercises but gradually as they their palette becomes richer they 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 branch and do more um more um specific uh things it's kind of up to you really what it is you want to make and what you want to do if you want precise details if you've got precise questions about uh, the technology that's available, then why don't you contact Leslie Adams, who is the um, the head of the course, and she'll be able to uh, to let you know. Um, but there is a you know a remarkable range of uh, you know techniques and facilities here. So um, yeah, but contact uh, Leslie if you've got specific questions about that. Yeah. Is that all right? Sounds great, Martin. Thank you. Yeah. And if you do have any requests for specific webinars that we can offer on our site, then please send them in to us as well. And we can see if we can arrange them for you, uh, Wynn. So that'd be great. to great. Great. Cool. Martin, um, just want to say thank you so much for that presentation. You're very welcome. I've enjoyed it. Thank you to everyone who's been watching. And thank you for all those very good, uh, intelligent questions. It's been a pleasure.
Excellent. Thank you so much. I've put okay. the link um, to our webinar page. Uh, we have a number of other webinars coming up uh, hosted by UCA. I think, believe the next one is on the uh, 26th of February and it's on the topic of music. So if you're interested, you can head over to our website and register for that. So thank you very much, guys, for joining us. Big thank you to Martin. Lovely to meet you. And Big thanks to James. Um, thank you to everyone who watches, uh, who's been watching, and uh, hope to see you soon. Oh, okay, sure, sure. take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.